afternoon. I'm so excited. Today we have Camille um, Ross Kelly from Thimble Blossom. I'm so excited to have you here, Camille. Tell us about your newest collection that arrived at Fat Quarter Shop in the last two weeks. Oh, I'm so happy that it's finally here. And it's so good to be uh, back here with you guys for another trunk show. So um, this is called Lighthearted and it's um, my newest collection with Moda. And um, I love this one. It's super cheery. Um, it is also part of the Moda Stitch Pink program, which is awesome because they're uh, raising money to help with uh, breast cancer research. And so lots of good from this one. I'm excited that it's finally here. Yeah, I love it. So I wanna tell all of the Fat Quarter Shop customers, we have a ton of the fabric, but once it's gone, it will be gone forever. Yeah. The white on white though, we bought all of the remaining that Moda had in stock. And so if we sell out between now and Monday, we'll have more like Tuesday, Wednesday, but then once that sells out, it's gonna be gone. We have all the pre-cuts. There's a Moda box kit that Camille's gonna talk about in a little bit. I did wanna show this. Um, this is a bundle that I put together just called Kimberly's Lighthearted Bundle. And I just like it cause it's pink. And so um, I'm just gonna show you real quick what you could do with it. So that is basically a pattern called Holloway. It's a completely free pattern. It uses 16 fat quarters, so it would use the entire fat quarter bundle, finishes at 60 by 80, and that is just so super cute. So I just wanted to show that because I came up with that yesterday. And so super we have, cute. yeah, so we have all the things. These are the solids that Camille picked to go with the line. We, of course, got the Jolly Bar, Honey Bun. This line has a Honey Bun for all the Honey Bun lovers. We've got the 108s. Um, so excited. And um, we're gonna have a quilt along that we're gonna talk about. But we're gonna kinda just jump right in and let Camille show all her beautiful quilts. We're gonna show, uh, she's There's gonna- There's a lot of quilts. Yeah, she's gonna show, <laughs> we're gonna start with Heartfelt. Um, or yeah, we're gonna start with Heartfelt, which is the lighthearted uh, pattern. And then we're gonna show all the lighthearted patterns. And then we'll show some other stuff too. Yeah. So well, you wanna we were just, just jump right do... in? We were just going to do the lighthearted quilts, and then I was like, well, I have a few other ones from last time that I didn't show, and it kind of evolved into having a, a lot, a lot of quilts. So we're going to get started, I guess. Here, I'll move my chair out of the way. I feel like the more, the better. Everyone loves to see yes. quilts. Well, <laughs> I have a lot of them here, so that's, hopefully that's a, it's not too many. So this is the first one. This is from Lighthearted, and this is, I, I mean, I always say look this one's my favorite but they're all they're all kind of my favorites but I do really love this one and it is called heartfelt it has these uh, cute little hearts they're kind of half uh, half of a heart and then there's hearts little little corner units that make up the hearts as well and always I say this like it's so much better the color so much better in person the live stream can't really do it justice but this one is called lighthearted and the back and binding I did on this one is this beautiful aqua floral and the darker pink uh, binding to have kind of a, a nice contrast on that one. Um, and then it's quilted in straight lines. So Abby, my quilter, she always does such a good job. Yeah. That one turned out pretty cute. All right, so that one is uh, the first lighthearted quilt and you're gonna hear me <laughs> struggling to lift and fold all of these quilts. This, uh, like I said last time, it's quite a workout. So this one is called a door. I'm gonna make sure I get it right side up. And this is the Moda kit this time, those beautiful box kits. Oh, I wish you could see the whole thing. Can you see that, Kimberly? Yes, I can see all the way to the bottom. All right, so this one's called a door and um, it has 12 stars that are all um, that all go around the center star and it's super bright and cheery if you guys have seen this fabric in person you know that it's such a happy collection nice and bright and cheery so this one is um, going to be a quilt along in october for breast cancer awareness month which is awesome so grab um, your kit and then i'll be posting more about that quilt along uh, let's see, next week sometime in the middle of September, I'll start talking more about the schedule for that and um, 
what our plans are. There's, of course, some great giveaways and different things throughout it. So you are going to want to participate. Okay, can you show them the backing and the binding real quick? Oh, sure. Yeah. So I didn't have the 108s yet. I'm going to crouch right. down so I can see you. Yeah. I didn't have the 108 sample yardage yet when I had um, to have my samples finished. So I use this floral on the back. So pretty. And then this um, little red cross hatch on the binding. But I'm remaking the quilt during the quilt along. I'll tell you much more about that um, when the quilt along gets started. And then that quilt will be part of an, an auction, a fundraiser that we're doing. So um, that one, when I make it, I'm going to put the blue heart 108 on the back. So that one that Kimberly showed a little bit ago. And that I'm excited one, about that. And that one's 84 inches square. Yes. You're gonna have to tell me the size on some of these because I, well, I know their names and fabric collections, the size, I may not get right. And the first one she showed was heartfelt. That one is 70 by 73. And I yes. I just made it bigger. I showed it last week, but I made it bigger for Emma. And I I turned it into a queen, and it was super easy just to add a row and a column. Oh, you made it queen size? I didn't realize that. Yeah, it took forever. I was like, oh, my God, this it's quilt's never so going to end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big quilts can feel like that sometimes when you make them bed size, for sure. Yeah. All right, so this one's called Primrose, and this is kind of my take on a red and white and pink quilt, you know, because there's a lot of pink in the collection, stitch pink, right? So this one's called Primrose, and it's a star block and uses fat quarters. And what I really love on this one is it's kind of hard to see, um, but I used the little heart low volume print in the sashing. So I don't know if you can yeah, see you can see. Really and then cute. I use the heart print on the back as well in the red. So it is really a red and white quilt. And yeah. And since you've done so many blue and white collections, it would be, you know, you did this one in red and pink. You could easily yep. do this in any of the other collections she has that are two colored. And it's yes. 76 inches square. Yes. All right. So the next um, light-hearted quilt is called Jelly Beans. So this is um, one of my earlier patterns was called Jelly Bean and it was from Ruby and I have um, that's been one of my best sellers for years. It's a great jelly roll quilt. It's just one jelly roll that makes this uh, nice lap size quilt and um, so I decided to reprint it in light-hearted because it just worked so well with the fabric and I put two versions on the pattern. So I called it Jelly Beans instead of Jelly Bean. So if you have that old uh, pattern in Ruby, there is now a um, full color, just like all my new patterns quilt. Oh yeah, there's the first version and the second version. So you can choose which one you wanna make. Okay. So that is Jelly Beans. So can you show them up close, the binding and the backing, and it's 60 by oh, 76. Sure. Yes, and I'll show them the quilting too, which is adorable. I don't know if you can see yeah, their little, little hearts. squirrely hearts. Mm -hmm. Great job, Abby. And then the backing is the green and white uh, floral, and then a green and white striped binding. And that one's pretty easy, right? Like if they're a beginner? Super easy. Yeah. Yes, this is, this is one of my best beginner quilts. People always ask, like, what to start with. This is a great one. It just has really simple, straightforward piecing and snowball corners that aren't too small and fussy. So that is a fun one. All right, and this is the last of the lighthearted quilts. You might rec uh, recognize this one. <laughs> I made it a time or two, but um, I'm always looking for an excuse to remake my swoon quilt. I love it in every fabric collection. And um, so I made it in lighthearted and released a special pattern that has uh, this on the front and the back, a full color pattern, so. Can't go wrong with a swoon quilt. And that one, did you use the, did you use a Bella or did you use the white on white from the collection? So I get that question a lot and my answer is, I usually get five yards of each piece to make all of my sample quilts. So, 
Um, Moda has that yardage flown in early so that I'm able to make my samples uh, before the fabric collection is released. So I usually have five yards of the white on white. So I usually pick one uh -huh. of the quilts that gets this special white on white. And in this case, it was a door. So um, this one has the Moda Bella and I love the 200. I buy it by the bolt. I use it on tons of quilts. So if you can't get the white on white, Bella 200 matches all of my recent fabric collections really well. So um, that is what I used on this one is the 200. I'm gonna show you the quilting on this too. It's like a Baptist fan with a little heart. I really loved all the hearts this time, it just felt. And then the backing and the binding. Right. The backing, um, again, I would have used the blue 108 on this. I used the heart, but didn't have the sample yardage quite yet. So I used the smaller blue heart and then the um, stripe in the aqua and white as well. And that quilt finishes at 80 inches square. And what's great about the swoon yes. is I feel like if you make it, you just make it again and again and again, and it's fat quarter friendly. So yes. everyone's got fat quarters in their stash. I just feel like it's very like kind of one of those patterns you can just like pick up and do. It's 18 fat quarters and five yards of background. So that is a great one to make in any fabric collection. I think I might've told this last time but I just think it's so funny years and years ago when I really swoon, which was probably a little over 10 years ago now. Um, they did a swoon competition on a Flickr group, which is like super dates me because it's way back in the day. But um, they tried to make ugly swoon blocks, but they all look good. Yes, <laughs> so I remember that. Good and fabric, which is awesome because not every quilt pattern lends itself to every uh, fabric collection. So that one can make it in anything so anyway I want to hear about your um your I'm gonna crouch down here the shine bright see. quilt along. shine bright sampler because I'm really excited about that quilt along that's coming up in November okay so we are going to be doing a quilt along and we're going to host so the adore quilt along that Camille talked about is going to be the box kit and that is available mm -hmm. now and it's going to start in October. So that's the first sew along and Camille's hosting that one. Yes, over on Instagram, um, I'll have more info on like the schedule and how that's all going to go there. So come follow me on Instagram, it's at Thimble Blossoms and we'll, we'll help you that out there. And that is darling. And then, oh, so the you. Bonnie and Camille Quilt Bee book that came out a couple of years ago, which is Camille with her mom, Bonnie, it has the shine on sampler. So, you know, a lot of you have already made it, but it's so cute. I mean, it's just one of those quilts you get to make again and again. So we colored it or Camille colored it and uh, lighthearted. And I'm just gonna show you some of the blocks. Teresa made the blocks for the quilt along and the kit will come out in October because I think we added uh, a few SKUs from Ellie and Peachy Keen just and so we're just waiting on those bolts to arrive and so we will be showing these in our live streams on social media it's so cute and um we have pre-sold the kit and there are some left but once they're gone they'll be gone forever and we're going to end with my very favorite b block on point i loved making this so block. cute i know so we hope that you join both of the sew alongs because why not? Yeah, there's going to be plenty to sew in uh, October and November, lighthearted. Yes, sure. so pretty. And this one, the quilt is 68 by 80, and the kit comes with the book, and it's going to go from November 2023 to October 2024. And we'll share our progress for sure on the first of the month. And you can find, if you don't want to sew it in um, these fabrics, you can find the fabric requirements on the Jolly Jabber blog. Awesome. I'm super excited about that. I am debating making it again, but this would be my fourth shiny yeah. sampler. So I'm like trying to justify it, but we'll see after the Adore Quilt Along, which is just a month long. So there will be the Adore Quilt Along and then the Shine Bright Quilt along will start and, and go for several months. So that'll be perfect timing. I'm really excited about that. So cute. And everybody's commenting about your little cute kitty that was walking oh, on the yeah. couch. Now I don't know where he's I have 
I fed them a lot this morning and begged them to behave. This one in particular gets into a little bit of trouble. So hopefully they're good back there, but I, I can't uh, promise that. So keep an eye on them. That's so funny. Okay, so we're going to uh, show so some other patterns. Going. Yeah. Okay, so a lot of quilts. I won't take quite as long to talk about all of these because I don't want this to turn into a three-hour live stream. Um, but I have plenty of them here, and I'm going to start with this first one, which is called Adventure. And the reason for that is because from the last um, trunk show, I had it over on my quilt ladder over here, and that was one of the questions that was asked the most was, well, what's that one over there? So the one on the ladder, which you can almost see, is my sail uh, quilt from Nantucket Summer. And this is the one that was there during the last yes. last trunk show. And this is called Adventure. So it's a blue and white. Obviously, I love blue and white quilts. So um, it is just a really simple, easy to piece. I believe it's strip pieced. It's been a minute since I made it. But um, this is a really fun one. And it's from uh, One Fine Day. Oh no, this is from Sunday Stroll. I'm gonna get those those uh, fabric names mixed up a time or two probably. This one's Sunday Stroll. And it uses five yards of the main color and it's 76 inches square. Yes. And on the pattern cover, it shows it in blue and red and aqua. So if you wanna see the different variations, you can see on there. All right, so this one is from a, a quilt retreat I taught at called Thimble Therapy. So shout out to all my Thimble Therapy friends if they're on here. And um, this was from ooh, last April. Time is flying by. And um, I cut all the kits for the for the retreat from my stash. And so they were like all the way from the brand new lines all the way back to the beginning. And um, so everybody made them for my stash. And I loved that. It was so fun to see it being used and everybody's looked a little bit different. So this one is called Bright Side and um, super fun, easy blocks. I love this type of block, mm -hmm. this little on point block. So that is a fun one. And oh, you gotta see the back on this. It's the Shine On Mums that were also in Hello Darling. And then that Bias Stripe, which I love. And you've seen that on many of my quilts over the years. I never get tired of them. And that one's 66 by 78. Yes. So a good throw size. All right. So this next one goes all the way back, all the way back to Happy Go Lucky. Maybe one of my AirPods. Um, Happy Go Lucky way back in the day. So this was like. Oh, I don't know, 13 years ago or so. And this is called Fireworks. And that and one's I love the size. 68 inches, oh, 68 inches square, 16 fat quarters. Yes. So I'll come up a little closer so you can kind of see the blocks. This is one of those quilts that looks great in every fabric collection. And um, this happy-go-lucky print on the back is one of my favorites from the good old days. And um, it has the little dots. The dots yeah. Yeah. So I made this one in Happy Go Lucky. And then in, let's see, little snippets, I think, or smitten, I can't recall. I think it was smitten. But, oh, that one's yeah. The Good Life okay. that is on the screen, or not The Good Life. You guys, there's too many that I can't remember. That one's Dwell. Okay. But I have uh, colored it in the good life as well. And then I have a little mini version as well. If you don't want to commit to the whole quilt, but you want to try out these blocks, this is a really fun little mini. That one's so cute. I the love the border is. on that one. That's one of my favorite prints that you've done is that little rose. I love that print. This little rose from Smitten yep. was so sweet, yes. And the back of it has this little aqua dot, which I I feel like with my minis, since I hang them on the wall, which by the way, I just hang them with clear push pins. Everybody always asks that when I talk about my minis. Um, so there's like a million little holes on my wall, but I don't mind. The, the quilt, mini quilts cover it. it. It works out pretty well. So um, they always ask me if I put anything on the back and I do because it's always fun to use an extra print half the quilt, right? Mm -hmm. Your backing? Yeah. 
So there's that mini. All right, so this one is called Sunnyside. And um, kind of a funny thing, I have the, all these words that are kind of my favorite words. And I'm like, oh, that's such a cute word. I don't know if you guys do that and you have these words that you really like when you're naming things. So I had named this quilt Sunnyside. And then I was folding patterns one day, getting orders ready. And I was like, oh, I should name a fabric collection Sunnyside. That's such a sweet name. So this is called Sunnyside, but it's made out of Sunday Stroll. Sunnyside. So how's that work? Confusing. Oh, so it's just this really simple log cabin block. You make it out of, I think this one is, if I'm remembering correctly, a charm pack and a honey bun. Or maybe two charm packs and honey buns. It says uh, two honey but, buns and a charm yes. pack. Yeah. Oh, and a charm pack. Okay. So really a fun one. It shows off the fabric collection really well. So if you have some honey buns and some charm packs, and it's 60, you you'll enjoy this one. 68 by 76. I also think that's a great one for a beginner because when you get both of yes. those pre-cuts, they're mm -hmm. already cut. So really you can just kind of jump right into the sewing part of it. Yes, totally. I agree. And this one has this beautiful aqua floral on the back and a dot. You're, you're probably going to notice I use dots and stripes yes. on a lot of my bundings. My quilt pile over here is getting pretty tall already. I brought these down yesterday to get them ready. I hurt my back a little bit because quilts are so heavy. Yeah. <laughs> so people underestimate when you have a stack like this. Oh, I love this one. So this one is just a I really love vintage, simple vintage quilts. And um, this one is just nine patches and it's made from a honey bun as well. I think two honey buns, right? Yes. And um, it's called Rainbow Connection and it is super simple, but I think has like a lot of impact as well. It's just really beautiful and classic. And if you like making nine patches, you will love this one. This is from the Shine On collection. And it's this is one of 70, 76 inches square. Yes. Oh, and I used a floral on this binding. Isn't that cute? That's cute. And that's the Shine On collection, yeah. It is, yeah. I think I'm now around, I don't really keep track, but I think there's around 30 collections now. So some of the names can get a little jumbled, but I know them all very well. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so this one is called Cakewalk. And last time I showed you Takes the Cake, and um, that was actually made because I had made this one, Cakewalk, which was made out of layer cake. And then I had four of them in my album, in my favorites on my camera roll. It just had four for some reason. And I opened my my photo album and I could see them all close together. I was like, oh, I have to make that with all the little pieces and everything. So it kind of morphed into takes the cake as well. But I love making this one really simple. This is again, one of my best beginner quilts is this cake walk quilt. You get a layer cake and some background and it's perfect. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about backgrounds. This is a Moda um, cross weave. And I believe the number on this one is 53. It's the black um, cross weave from Moda. And I think that one makes a great background. I already talked about 200, which is my favorite Bella background. Um, I do use the white on white backgrounds for some of my quilts as well that go with the collection. But again, that's if I have enough of that on hand. Um, and then I'm gonna show you in a little bit another one of my favorite cross weaves. So lots of great background options. If you don't love quilts with white backgrounds, because some people worry about them getting dirty with pets or different um, things with lots of kids around, then this is a great option. So cross weave. Oh, and you can see the backing on this one. And it's 60, this is 63 by 69 in the handmade collection. Handmade, mm-hmm. That is one of my favorite. This, is, this was a vintage print that we like, uh, had collected, my mom and I love vintage feed sacks, and so that was 
was one of the ones he used. And of course, he strike by me. Yeah. My mom is on here, by the way. I don't know if she knows how to comment. Comment. Hi, Bonnie. But... Hi, mom. <laughs> she called to make sure I was ready for this yesterday and said she would be watching. So let's see. I think next is Vintage Remix, right? Yes. Yes. Vintage Remix. Got to make sure I get the right Kyle. So Vintage Remix is, again, one of my older patterns. And I've made it several times in different fabric collections. So when I got my dwell fabric, and the sewing from it, I was like, just, just one more dwell quilt. So I made, let's see, this one, which is just a really simple, easy quilt to make. And it just shows off those prints really well. I wish the lighting was a little bit better. I can't, it doesn't really do it justice, but um, then it has this well print on the back and then the little nine patch print is on the front and look at that beautiful baptist fan quilting i don't know if abby's watching but she makes all of this possible so thank you for all your hard work <laughs> yeah so so camille's quilter is abby latimer you can find her on instagram we also have her linked on the jolly jabber blog as a long arm quilter it tells you how to get a hold of her that one um, yeah. was the Good Life Collection, 72 by 84. Actually, the, the one on the pattern cover is the Good Life Collection. This one's 12. Oh, okay. So I just don't want them yeah. to get confused. Yep. Pattern cover is the Good Life. Okay. Yes. All right. So this is um, a mini called Mini Vintage Tulips. And this goes way back to um, Hello Darling. So this was... Ooh, probably 10 years ago that this collection came out and I love this little mini it does hang on the wall in my sewing room so I pulled it down to um, show you guys but just a really sweet easy piecing fun little mini if you enjoy making them you like this one okay show them the back it's just some bias stripes and I ended up with stripes on both <laughs> somehow but I don't mind and that one's 11 by 16, so super tiny and char pack friendly. Yes. I keep saying this because it feels like way back when, but this is another one from way back when. And this is the Vintage Picnic Collection. This is Somerville. So I think last time I showed you, let's see, Springville or Autumnville, I think, in the last front show. So this is Somerville. It was the first of the bills. And um, I just liked the name Somerville. And then people were like, hey, I want to make a winter version of that. And so I did a winterville and a springville and autumnville after. <sighs> My arms are getting tired. So this one has a, just a really classic gingham on the back in red and then a blue dot for the binding. And that was so. 70 inches square and it uses fat eighths. Yes, it does. And I made this a couple times. I made it in Vintage Picnic and then I think I made it in Woven's as well with the border from The Good Life. That one is great in any fabric as well. And since you know I love house quilts, I think this is, hopefully this is in the right order. It is. You guys have this pictures. This is mini dwell and this is one of the first mini quilts that I made um, back when I started making minis and this has been hanging on my sewing room wall ever since. So just a really fun, this one's scrappy, it's not any certain fabric collection, but if you want a quick and easy project, definitely recommend this one. And the back on that, oh, I should show you, is from Happy Go Lucky as well. And it's 13 inches by 15 inches. All right. So this one I hadn't seen for a little while. I have a big, uh, well, not that big. I have a small quilt closet upstairs, but it is full of quilts. And I do give away a lot of my quilts to family or friends or for different charitable things. Um, but I do keep my favorites. And this is one of my favorites from Hello Darling that I've had in that closet for a long time so it was fun to see it again. It's called Lollies. 
This is from Hello Darling. Yeah, this one's and way back. It has. Yeah, this one goes way, yes, way back. back. Yes, it does. And this is one of my favorite prints we ever did. Right here, just a very sweet floral and um, just really bright and cheery colors. And the backing on this is these red ribbons and then got a, another bias binding, stripe bindings. And it's 64 by 74 and layer cake friendly. Yes, this one is layer cake. So that's Lolly's. All right, this one is called Daybreak. And I have two different versions of it here that I've made and they're, they look so different, but it is the same quilt. So this one I wanted to go really just scrappy and vintage feeling. I love, I say this over and over, but I love vintage quilts and just thought this had a really vintagey feel. So this one's made from a layer cake and this was from the Shine On collection. And I love in this one, the Binding, oh, sorry, the sashing is this little tiny rainbow print from Shine On. That rainbow Just print really has lots of memories because I made that Shine On quilt and made all those rainbow quilts go one direction except for one piece in the quilt. I don't know how you did that. I, I saw that quilt in person when I photographed it, your sample, and I was like, every rainbow on this quilt is going the same direction. I don't do that. So I was so impressed with you. That was so impressed. That brings back nightmares almost. <laughs> yeah. I don't do directional. People always ask me about how I put, you know, my fabrics to make them go the right direction. And I don't do that. I have my fabrics going every which way. So I'm not the right person to ask on that one. So this one has the Navy mums on the back and then a I, I'm realizing I need to branch out a little bit, but how cute is a bias stripe binding in red and pink? So that's the first thing I look for I, when I do a binding. First thing I look at is I look for a good stripe. Yes. And you know, sometimes when I design them, because um, I usually get scans for a fabric collection long before I get the actual fabric. So I'll use those scans to digitally design them in. Illustrator in Adobe Illustrator. And um, so sometimes I use other fabrics when I first design it because I'm like, I gotta branch out. And then I end up using the stripes once the mm -hmm. actual fabric comes with samples. Yep. So that is Daybreak in Shine On. But then I was like, oh, I would really like this in, in blue and white quilt. So I made another one a little later. And this is just all blue and white prints that I had from all different collections. This is kind of a mix of a whole bunch of them. And this was so much fun to make. And that would look so good in that red and pink bundle that I showed oh, you. It would. Mm -hmm. Yes. A red and white version of this. That would look would really good. Beautiful. And it's 71 inches square. Yes. So I use scraps for this. Um, oh my gosh, you guys look, this has been on my couch cat hair on, I pretend you didn't see that. Um, so I used um, all different navy scraps for mine, but um, it's also layer cake friendly. So you could do it either way. So this is and the I'll bundle the I was talking here. about. That would look so good with it. So good, yes. You should do that. You have plenty of time. I know. Right? I can. I, I can at least. I can at least make a block this weekend. I can for sure do yes, that. Yes, you should. It's a fun one to make. Yeah. Um, lots of half square triangles. This is just a blue, a navy heart. And this one needs a good cleaning because Cosmo has been sleeping on this one. I think. Oh. So. Set that one aside. Don't tell anyone. All right. Now, um, this is, I showed all of my sunny side quilts in the last front show, so I don't have those in this one, but I made this one since then, and it, I called it sunny side stars, but it's just a free, free, the instructions are on my Instagram. If you look for the like digital image of this quilt, I think it's like nine posts back. And, um, I love it. Just stars and cross weave and 
Ross Hatch quilting. The texture on this one is so good. Look at that texture. And I did the cross weave binding as well. And it has this pretty pink floral on the back, which is a little unexpected, I feel like, for this one. But we went the wrong way. Super fun. So you can find that just on my Instagram. And um, yes, at Film Blossoms on Instagram. And it's just a free pattern. You just swipe over and you can see the slides and I'll show you how to make it. So this one I also mocked up in lighthearted. I think you guys have that one. So that's the sunny side one. I don't know if I gave you, there it is. There's the lighthearted one. And I loved it in lighthearted. So I will be making that one. Um, I think my mom's making that one too. So we'll have to share those once we get them made. And the background on that one is the motocross weave and it's the new one. It's called gray. And I think it ends in 33. So if you're looking for the background for that, that is the new motocross weaving gray, which I bought a couple bolts of because I'm worried about running out of it. So, that's a good one. And last time I also didn't show you this one from Dwell because it was it has been hanging on the wall in my office for a year or two, I guess. And I love it up there, but I did pull it down so I can show you this time. It's called Skyline. There's some stars and lines. This is from Dwell. Really easy piecing. It doesn't have any Y seams. The stars are, let's see if I can show you one close up. The stars are pieced with just really easy half square triangles and snowball corners. So love this one. And you know how much I love this backing. I use it on so many of my quilts. This is from Dwell and it's the 108. I don't think you guys have that anymore. I think it's long gone. Yeah, I wish Moda would keep it in stock forever, the 108s. Oh, right? That's like the one yes, thing that too. once, you know, you buy so much of it and you think, oh, we have plenty and then it's gone. I know. So. I feel the same way in my personal stash. So this one has that um, dwell nine patch and then it has the cross hatch. Floral. Yeah, oh, so pretty. No, it's the, it is a cross hatch, but I was talking about the binding. Oh, the, the nine patch okay, print. yeah, it does. And then the quill is cross hatch, which you might have noticed. I've been doing a lot of my quilts lately. I love it. I do too. I'm not sure Abby loves quilting cross hatch as I, much as I love cross hatch. It's <laughs> so great. I love it because it lets the quilt do the talking, really. Your mm -hmm. focus yes. just goes straight to the design. I feel like it makes the design pop more. Yes, and it gives it this texture that is just, it's very like beautiful and vintage, but it feels, I mean, obviously it doesn't have quite the same effect as a hand quilted vintage quilt and cross hatch, but it's close as we can get without spending 9 million hours hand quilting in a grid, right? And that one's 74 by 85 and fat quarter friendly. Yes. Now one's going back on the wall above my desk right after this because it looks really weird. <laughs> oh. there. So um, this one is called Rain or Shine and it's made from a jelly roll. It has these cute little stars in between. But there's two versions on the pattern. Um, one with the little stars or you can just make these into little sashing posts. So it's not quite as complicated. So the one without the stars, great beginner quilt for a jelly roll. And this is from Shine On, the Shine On collection. A few years ago. And it's and you're never gonna guess what's on the back. The mums. Yeah. I and it's so 60, many quilts on the back. It's 66 by 74. And I, I can you show the quilting on that up close? We sure. had a question earlier. They wanted to know um with the straight line quilting, does it look mm -hmm. puffy or or does it just look like quilting in person? Um, I think it, it just looks great. Yes, it doesn't, but I think it would, it could depend on what batting you use. Yes. So I use a really thin batting. Um, and so that could be why I use warm and white for a lot of my quilts. I started using some of the bamboo batting on some of them, but um, I haven't had it be puffy with any of the battings that I've used, but. Maybe if you're using a thinner batting, 
that would lend itself well to the straight lines, which are about a half an inch apart, by mm -hmm. the way. I get asked that a lot. So that is rain or shine. Can you see my kitties back there watching? Yes, they're both like, what is she doing? Who is she talking to? I'm not over there and she's talking to the yes. wall. What is she doing? Yep, they, they're pretty used to my shenanigans over here during the day. So this one is called Over the Moon and it's from Smitten, which was a few years ago now. And it's just a really, like, I love this bear paw block. Just really simple and fun. I love the sashing posts and units in that, how they make up the stars. So just another old favorite. I can't believe I can even say that Smitten is old, but it's gotten. And it's a layer cake friendly. Yep, and mm -hmm. 62 by 80. Yes, and it has this, um, let's see, I think this was a, was it a 54 wide? It's really soft, uh, is it sateen on the back? I can't remember which. Yeah, which I can't remember it. either. I think that would make a great, you know, a manly quilt if you, you know, yes, just did all absolutely. the navies. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I did draw up a navy and white version that I wanted to make of that one. And it hasn't happened yet, but one day. stay tuned. It might. I have a very long list of quilts I'd like to make. And it is an actual list. I keep going with them. All right, so this one is from One Fine Day, and it's called Lucky Day. I don't know which way to show this one, too, because it's kind of a gradient. Can you see that? Mm-hmm. And um, just a really fun way to use fat eights. Fat eights, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, fat, fat eights, fat eights. Yes, so just a fun, simple block. I love star quilts. I've made a million of them and I never get tired of making them. And this one has this window pane print on the back and then one of my favorite prints from this collection, this little uh, clover, because you know, yeah, I still Lucky have days. I still have some of that in my stash, that clover. And that one's 72 inches square. Yes, and there's two versions on that one too. There's the fat eighth one that you can see there. And then if you want to make it in um, fat quarters, this is a red and white version that is on the pattern as well. And that would look good in the little bundle that I put together. I'm obsessed with that, that bundle. One, I'm so obsessed that with that one bundle. That would be absolutely perfect with yeah. that bundle. Yes, it would look almost almost exactly like that. So this one is called All Bundled Up. And this is made of wovens, which I love wovens. This is the Bonnie Knoll of Wovens collection we did a few years back. And this is so soft and snuggly. I need to retire this quilt just so we can use it in the winter, even though we live in the desert and it doesn't get snowy. <laughs> it is scarves and hats and mittens and just a really happy so that one's perfect. This one has a woven plaid on the back and then another red woven. I like that quilting. Finish. That quilting is a little bit different than the others you showed. Yeah, it's a cable. Um, it's meant to be a border. Oh, yeah. Design. It's just a cable. But I started having Abby do that back ooh, with my Norway quilt, I think was the first one. And I love it. Just a simple cable. It feels like a knit sweater, you know? Mm -hmm. So that is all bundled up. And I've seen this one made from everything from like um, bright prints to all neutrals with like a um, like a grayish background. Oh, it was so pretty. So if you're the one that made that, I still think about that quote. start a race over here. All right, so this one is a mini quilt um, that is called Mini Handmade. It's from our handmade collection. And it has the little flower girl um, flowers on it and little spools. And at the bottom, I embroidered, you do not find the happy life, you make it. 
It's 19, so we did some, 19 inches square and charm pack friendly. Yes, we did some embroidery with that one, with that collection, because it was called Handmade, and that was such a fun one. And that saying is a favorite of mine. I've heard it a few oh, times over the years. And show them the back. Happy. Oh, the back, yes. I don't know why I have these extra pieces, and so I put them together. I need a backing for that one. And then a little stripe lining. Oh, you can leave it up there, sorry. And this one is also on the wall in my sewing room. Every, all my walls look pretty bare today. I'm ready to get my quilts back. back. <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm used to them being there. When I pull them down, it just feels like a big hole. All right, so this one is called Patrick Sky. And this is from Vintage Holiday um, back in the day. And uh, this one is, I believe, a layer cake quilt. Is that right? It says no, uh, one, off the top of my head. one jelly roll, one charm pack, and seven aqua fat quarters. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you have that list. I was thinking this one was layer cake. And it's 72 by 84. And this one has the vintage holiday ribbon gift print on the back, which I loved little red stripe binding. This one makes me miss a vintage holiday. Mm -hmm. That was a really fun Christmas collection from years ago. And then after I made that one, I was like, well, these on earth, oh. You know what, I'm jumping the gun. I will tell you about that one when I show you the ornament quilt because I forgot that I have that one. So this one is called Good Morning. And I made this one with our early bird collection a few years ago. And the story behind the name <laughs> is every morning when I wake my kids up. Oh, I lost an AirPod. Hold on. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, so every morning when I wake my boys up, I have three boys. And I, for years, I sang them that song from Singing in the Rain. And I don't want to sing on here, but it goes, good morning, good morning. So I sing that to them in the morning. And um, one of them just moved to Brazil for um, a church mission. And so once he found out he was going there, we would sing, bom dia. And I'm really sorry for my <laughs> terrible Portuguese. And then the other was going to England. So we'd say, top of the morning, top of the morning. It's been a really fun thing in our family. So my boys will never watch this, so they won't be embarrassed about that. But that's why I called it Good Morning, because that is one of those happy things for me. The only problem is now whenever I fill an order and it has a Good Morning quilt, I get that song stuck in my head. Yeah. It is a catchy one, for sure. And if you haven't watched Singing in the Rain, go watch it. It's really all right, I think, did I show you the back on that? I should have. It's from Early Bird. This was a sateen, I remember that, because it's super soft. Yeah, and that one's yeah. fat quarter friendly and 65 inches square. Yes, I started with my story and forgot all of the, <laughs> to mention all of the other stuff. All right, so this one is called Head Over Heels. There's not a song for me to sing with this one, so you're welcome. <laughs> so this is just a blue and white, which you know I love. And I loved this blue and white floral from Smitten, so I wanted to design a quilt that would really just highlight that. So it uses the little dot and stripe from Smitten, but this would look great in any fabric. And I even used the same floral on the back. So just really classic. And it's 69 by 81, and that one's yardage, so. Yes, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think this one has a red version and an aqua version on the pattern as well. So if you want to see the different versions. So this one is called Shining Brightly. Actually also from a little song that my kids would sing when they were little. I won't sing that one, but it's about little stars shining brightly. So I thought that was a perfect for the song. And that one's Fat Eighth Friendly and 72 by 80. Yep, and from the early bird collection, so it has that sateen on the back. 
And what is that well, panorama? And one of my favorite prints. Um, you it's know, like I, I can't remember. Can't remember what this one was called, but it's like a Baptist fan, but it's diamonds. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like that one too. And this is one of my favorite bindings ever. Sorry, you just cut to the quilt. Yeah. Oh wait. Um, which was this little rainbow stripe from Early Bird. This is one of my favorites. I have a whole bolt of that one. And I don't use it because I'm worried if I use it, I'll run out. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> do you do it's just too? Oh yeah, sometimes it's just yeah. fun to look at fabric. Yes, I was like, oh, I need a whole bolt because then I can do, what, 20 bindings. But then when I go to use it, I'm like, oh, not want to run out. Yeah. So I explained to you that I, I kind of like the same names mm -hmm. and I, I have words that are my favorites. So this one is called lighthearted, but it's from little snippets years ago. So you can guess where my lighthearted fabric collection name came from. It's actually this quilt. So I loved making this one. I just feel like it is such a pretty block with that star in the center. Any fabric collection really shines in this one. I've mocked it up lots of times since then. And um, it has this really fun floral on the backing from Little Snippets and our uh, measuring tape print from Little Snippets as well, which was one of my faves. You can see it. Well, the pieces are a little too small, but you see the measuring tape print in this one. Too. Yeah, I still have some of that too. The measuring tape, I saved some of that. <laughs> so did I. It's hard to let or to use up my last bits of fabric collection. So I have quite the stash of ones I just can't let go of. And that one's fat quarter friendly and 82 inches square. Yes. All right. So this one's going way, way back to April showers. Do you remember that one? Yes. Really? I loved that one. I still, I, I made this quilt in the mini version. And when I saw oh, yeah. it, but I don't remember where it is. So I was thinking maybe I need oh. to find that. <laughs> you do need to find that. I have this one hanging on my sewing room wall. So this one is called Puddle Jumping from years and years ago, but still a favorite. Has these greens and blues and the teal and just a really fun block. This one has the little umbrellas on the back. This was a vintage feed sack that we reprinted that just I just love, love, love. And that one's also 16 fat quarters and 75 inches square. Yes. One brings back some good memories. April showers. My stack is getting small. Well, this one's really big, but this stack is getting small. So. It's yeah, sometimes close. I feel like I just shift things from one side of the room to the other. <laughs> and that's exactly what you're doing. <laughs> yep. I'll get to put all these quotes back where they go a little later today. Yeah. All right, so this one's called Spools 2. I had a spools quilt pattern, let's see, back with ooh, marmalade, I think. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah, so then years later I did another one called schools two and this one's made out of a jelly roll and super fun to make again one of those that you could use any jelly roll on i have been wanting to make one where i use like the cross weave for the spool ends because i think that would be really cute and then it has i don't know if you can see the bottom the heart a little heart down the bottom so just a fun one this has that Good Life Floral on the back and a little heart dot binding. And it's 67 by 78 and Jelly Roll friendly. And it's quilted in modern loops, which is my favorite quilting mm. that I use on way too many quilts, but always a good one. All right. Um, this is the one I was talking about with Vintage Holiday a minute ago. I made I made um, a vintage holiday quilt back with, ooh, way back in the beginning, I think the collection was called Vintage Modern. And so I made a, an ornament quilt then. And then when we released Vintage Holiday, and yes, I realize this is a lot of vintages. <laughs> um, 
we, I did another version of that, not this one, so that would be a full color, like updated pattern, and it has the little ornament flannel on the back, it's super soft. So this is one of my favorite Christmas quilts that I've made, it is so cheery, loved making all the different blocks, it's just such a fun one to piece. And that was one of the so, rare collections that you had some flannel prints. Yes, we don't do flannel very often, but um, this one was flannel, and I think I used every inch of that flannel for my backings and for um, baby quilts that we I made with my son actually for a NICU here. So I don't have hardly any of that left, but it all went to good use. So after I made that, I was like, well, that would be even cuter, tiny. <laughs> so I made a mini for it. Look how cute it is. And it's got little, that loop pieces. quilting too. It does. She did a tiny modern loop quilt on it. Like, look how big that is compared to my fingers. It's just a tiny modern loop. Super cute. Good job, Abby. All right, so this one's called Patrick's Room. And I've made this one several times. The original on the pattern was made from Little Ruby, but this one is made from some Urban Chicks lines that were some of my favorites back in the day, um, Swell and Sweet. So that one was really fun to use like my most special little hoarded prints from mm -hmm. forever ago. And I love this one too because the back is patchwork. I sewed the rest of the scraps and pieces together to make this patchwork background or I, backing. I love that backing. Yes. I've done this for a few quilts and it does take longer. Yeah. Um, but such a fun way to use up a bunch of favorite prints, a turn pack, a layer cake, a really fun backing. And then I have a blue and white stripe on that. So patchwork swoon. And that one's 72 inches square and jelly roll friendly. Yes. Ooh, I'm almost at the bottom. I only have one more. Jesus. All right, so this is my legacy quilt. And this one is really special to me because my mom and my grandma and I got together one day and had a sewing day and we got some pictures of it, which was really special. My grandma is 96 now. Oh, yeah, there she is. Look how cute she is. Oh my goodness. So that's my, me and my mom and my grandma. We made these blocks all together. So I named it Legacy. And um, just one of those sweet memories. So. Oh. And my grandma is still is still here and she isn't sewing as much anymore, but she is the reason that my mom and I are the quilters that we are for sure. So that was a really special one. And that one's from the Bonnie and Camille Quilt Bee book, as is this heart one I'm about to show you. And I think that's a layer cake quilt. Is that right, Kimberly? Yes. And then last but not least, I haven't seen I mean, this, this one, one before. Oh my god! Have you? No, I love it. <laughs> I did a You Have My Heart quilt along back in February. Very spur of the moment, very unofficial. But I wanted to make this because a friend of mine was making it and I was like, oh, yep, yeah, I gotta, gotta do that as well. So thank you, Dana, for the inspiration and Mom for the pattern from the Quilt Bee book. This is a favorite for sure. And you got to see the backing on this one from Dwell. Oh, look how pretty on the back. And is that the cross weave, so the gray cross weave? It is. One? It's that. It's that gray cross weave. It's the thirty-three. So this is a great one to have. And then this is actually a binding from something upcoming. Oh, so there's a little sneak peek into what's coming. Hopefully, I don't get in too much trouble for that, but. I just found this this week, actually. And yep, that's my mom's version of the You Have My Heart quilt. Good job, mom. And hers was in scrappy Bonnie and Camille fabric, so that was just kind of a mix. And that's her cute uh, window seat. Oh, Cosmo's getting hungry. Her cute window seat in her sewing room that she took that picture on. So, 
Anyway, loved the backing and binding combo on this one. Made me so happy. <laughs> Can you hear him? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. He's like, I'm so hungry. I haven't eaten in. Um, well, I don't know. How long have I been on here? An hour or so. Yeah. So anyway, now I'm, that was my workout for the day, holding up all those quilts. Yeah. And now so you've seen pretty. the other half of my quilt collection. So you're all caught up. Okay, so we're going to do, I'm going to do questions from before the live stream and then questions that have come in okay. during the live stream. So if y'all have questions, pop them in. We'll go until we've answered them all. Of course, the very first question you could probably guess is how are the kitties? <laughs> the kitties are doing good. Um, they're hungry, apparently, but they're doing good. Cosmo turned five last month. I cannot believe we've had him for five years. So he's doing good. And Stitch is still hiding around the house. We kept, He was a foster that we had that mm -hmm. didn't um, socialize. So we ended up keeping him as a friend for Cosmo. So he's doing great too. Good. They keep me company while my kids are gone and I love it. Okay, the next question. Can you please reprint the ornament from Vintage Holiday? Mm -hmm. I want you to make it with a navy background. I would love to reprint the Vintage Holiday ornaments for sure. And I love the idea of a navy background. I'll run it by Moda and see if they'll let me one of these days. How has your work changed since your mom, Bonnie, retired? Um, you know, I'll be honest. It's a little lonelier. I loved just having an excuse to you know bug her all the time and ask her a million questions and collaborate with her i do miss that but i still bug her plenty and now instead of her working she's out working in her yard and she's been able to spend a lot more time with my grandma and so i'm super happy for her she is enjoying her retirement for sure and she's been making way more quilts <laughs> which is awesome you'd think after all these years of quilting, she she would have run out of things she wanted to make, but she's always making new stuff. So I miss it. I miss working together, but we're still just as close as, as ever. So can't miss her too much. She we talk all the time, so that's that's really great. Each collection is more beautiful than the last one. How do you do oh. it every time? <laughs> that's very nice of you to say. Um, a lot of stress and overthinking for sure. I love designing fabric and um, just the whole the whole process is really amazing. It doesn't mean it's stress free. It's definitely stressful at times. But I think what it comes down to now is I just try to always make something that I love and that I want to sew with. So if I design a quilt um, and I'm excited to make it, then I know you know, that's a good one. Whether it sells or not, it doesn't really matter. It's just, I'm just always looking for things I want to make mm -hmm. and I want to sell it. That's my main criteria. How do you decide what color you're going to do for your fabric collections? Do you go by what's popular or what you like, which I know is what you just answered, but kind of talk about your color. So as far as color goes, it's hard because I love my, my whole house is kind of like um, navies and blues and greens and grays and I I can't design every collection to match my house and my decor obviously but also that would get a little boring for me and and for you and so sometimes I'm designing just based on like home decor trends that I really like or a color that's a favorite at the moment um, that Nantucket blue color is kind of my favorite right now and I want to put that in every collection um, which it's a brand new Moda Bella I just found out last week, which is awesome. There's going to be one called Nantucket that matches my Nantucket blue. So pretty cool. But um, for Lighthearted, which I have my bundle right here, I'll show you. This one started because it was a stitch pink collection. So we knew we wanted lots of pinks because we wanted it to um, be for the stitch pink fundraiser, the breast cancer awareness, having the quilt along. Um, I, I don't know how many of you know this, but my mom... Um, went through treatment for breast cancer 10 years ago. And so this is definitely something that is near and dear to my heart. And I just wanted it to be cheerful and kind of Bonnie and Camille colors because to honor my mom and her fight that she had, but also just added in those, that bright cheery aqua mm -hmm. and some greens. And I just, I'm super happy with how it turned out. And I hope that a lot of 
um, funds can be raised with this one and that a lot of good can be done. So I'm hoping everyone loves sewing with this one as much as I did. It, it really is a special one to me. Yeah, love it. Do you have any retreats planned in the future? Um, I don't, but I should. I've kind of put it off a little bit while my boys were getting settled um, after graduations and stuff. And um, so I don't have anything currently planned except for quilt market, which isn't really a retreat, but I will get moving on that and I will keep you guys posted. Are you going to quilt market? I am. I'm going okay. to quilt market. I haven't been since uh, before everything shut down. So I am excited. It has been, it's been a while. Long time. Are you, you're going to be there, I take it. I haven't seen you I since. haven't decided. We make things, oh, well. me and Kevin, we are like, oh, well, not me. But we don't have a babysitter, so that's kind of the issue. <laughs> so yeah. we might go, we might not. We'll probably, like, just look at our kids' schedule that week and decide. Because if be they have to well, I hope you do two places at one time, we won't. If I don't know, maybe I'll go and he won't. I don't know. Well, hopefully Kimberly and I will see each other at market and we'll get a picture for you guys while we're there. Yep. What is the easiest quilt you have ever designed? Oh, um, I don't know about the designing. I mean, the easiest quilts that I make is I, and I do love making them is just like simple five inch square patchwork. I love that. Um, there's a, just a really simple free, tutorial over on my Instagram for a dwell um, simple patchwork quilt if anybody wants to make it, it has like the the calculations of what to cut the math for it um, I still love making basic patchwork quilts I definitely wouldn't say I designed any of them because it's just squares sewn together but um probably cakewalk is one of the easiest ones I've designed it's a really fun one that isn't hard to make and yeah, looks looks great and everything. So maybe cake walk. Can you tell us what colors are in your next fabric collection? I can. I might get in trouble for it, but I'll just say this. I'll just say if you enjoy Nantucket Summer, you're gonna like the next collection. Is that saying too much? No, it's I'll perfect. Be okay with that one? Yeah. Okay. And then do you have a collection, a Christmas collection in the works? I don't right now. Um, the last one that um, I designed was with my mom. It's called Merry Little Christmas. You can still find bits and pieces of that around. So if you love Christmas fabric, definitely grab that before it just disappears um, forever because that one is a little older now, two years old, I think. So that one is pretty recent, but I would like to design some more Christmas fabric in the future for sure. Um what type of batting we talked about it but do you want to talk about the batting you use again yeah so i have used the warm and white batting for years i i love it it just we live in a really warm climate so i don't make a ton of really like thick mm -hmm. quilts and that way we're able to use ours year-round which i love it's kind of funny to use a quilt in the middle of summer but when your air conditioning is on then Sometimes it's nice for that. So I tend to use warm and white for almost all of my quilts, but I did try some bamboo batting. Um, I thought I ordered a roll of that last year and I've used that for several quilts and I really like that too. And I can't recall the brand name, but Moda carries that mm -hmm. bamboo batting. So we can maybe add that to the comments later. Mm -hmm. That's what it's called. And then when you, before you start sewing, um, do you starch, do you pre-wash? How do you, I already know the answer, but I think other people don't know. <laughs> um, I am the laziest quilter because I don't do either of those things. I don't pre-wash because I, but I always pre-wash a quilt before I use it. Because mm -hmm. um, obviously I use a lot of pre-cuts. They don't lend themselves well to um, pre-washing. They probably lend themselves well to starching, but that is just way too much. <laughs> work for me so I don't tend to starch though I have friends that do and I know you like to start and I I really admire people who have that kind of patience I'm more of a open up the jelly roll and start cutting kind of a, a quilter so yeah thank Just regular piecing thank you to Mary Denny for the super chat um okay so the next collection release do you know what date Moda's going to put those up um well I they're fall like, market yeah fall market so, so October Beginning of October, yeah. they should be live. And I believe I get to share mine beginning of October as yeah. well. So I'll kind of be juggling that 
new fabric introduction and the Adora quilt along. So again, I try to keep up as much as I can with all the news and upcoming stuff on my social media. So Facebook and Instagram, I'll definitely be posting it there first. So if you want to see it, mm -hmm. keep an eye at the beginning of October. Um, everyone's loving the patchwork backing. Oh, yeah. That's a fun way to do it. Although it's tempting at the end because you're done piecing your quilt. You're like, oh, I'll just do regular backing. But highly recommend the piece backing. Yep. Uh, Life So Crazy would like you to do more accessories like mugs, shirts, hoodies, panels. Please, please, please. Ooh. Love all those ideas. Yes. Yes to all of them. <laughs> it, do you have a mini pattern that can be finished in one day? A mini pattern? Mm -hmm. Like which um, one of your I minis? Would say, I would say most of them can be finished in one day. Um, maybe not swoon and fireworks as they have a little bit, they have more, more half square triangles pieces. and more pieces in them. But most of the minis I would say you can do in one day. But if you're looking for a little project, um, I would recommend this one. Um, this is the mini charm bag. It's a free download from Moda. We'll make sure to link it. Um, it's called, the, if you search, I just did this to double check the name, but if you search Nantucket Summer uh, Mini Charm Pouch, it should come up. So this one's made in lighthearted. I actually, I can't claim that I made this one because Moda made it and sent it to me, which was super nice. So thank you. And it has the little um, lighthearted charms on it. How cute are the little zipper yep. pulls? And we so, have some of those, but once they're gone, they're gone. Yeah. So we have about 70 yes. left. Oh, that's all? Yeah. Okay. Well, run over and grab these. It's a little swoon and oh, oh my. and go. the little um, heartfelt mini hearts. So really fun. But this little pouch is super easy. Mm -hmm. It has great instructions. Uh, Carrie Nelson actually designed this one um, when she was at Moda and she did such a good job. It's super fun to make. So if you're looking for a quick and easy project, a mini quilt or this one is, is a great option. And thank you to Leslie Quilt. She says she loves Camille, but that you know that already. <laughs> hey, Leslie, how's it going? Yep. Go listen to her podcast. It's really great. Um, what's the name of her podcast? Uh, oh, Inappropriate, Inappropriate Quilters. Quilters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then Paula Tharp wants to know what your favorite pre-cut to use is. I know Kimberly's is layer cakes. You know, I've always said that it was layer cakes, which I do love layer cakes. But as I was going through these quilts, I was like, maybe it's a fat eighth bundle because I use a lot of fat eighths. Mm -hmm. Like that's, but I collect a lot of fat quarters. But when I think about it, I use my fat eighth bundles a lot. Mm -hmm. So I think I might have to say a fat eighth bundle. Though, of course, if you're choosing the fat quarter bundle, right? I mean, yeah. It, there's nothing prettier than than a fat quarter bundle. So, but to use fat eighth bundle for sure. Um, okay, so this is a great question, um, and I am going to offer the cross weave the two colors that Camille mentioned as bolts. You got to give me until next week to get oh. them online. Okay. So I'm going to offer those as bolts. We offer the color 200 in bolts of Bella, but can you kind of talk about cross weave, how you work with it? How is it different than a Bella or a print? Sure. Show it up close. Um, you know, I have this one right on top. I'll show you up close. So the difference with a cross weave is um, it's yarn that's dyed. So it has a little more texture, texture. more of a linen texture and um, just gives it a little bit different feel. It's the difference between a printed solid and a woven essentially, which is what that the cross weave is. Um, I believe that the cross weave and Moda can correct me if I'm wrong on this is usually two different uh, uh, fibers yeah, woven yeah. together. Yes. So um, it, I treat it just like I would any other quilting cotton, not really any difference. Um, I try not to handle it a mm -hmm. ton. So just you know, don't stretch it or right. anything just while I'm pressing and stuff. I just handle it a little bit more carefully, mm -hmm. but I treat it like any other fabric. Mm -hmm. Like, so, I, yeah, I feel um, like I, if you pull it, it's going to pull more than a cotton. Yeah. But if you're sure. careful with it, it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, the older cross weave, the, these are a newer mm -hmm. updated cross weave. I don't, didn't find this to fray at all. Were the older ones that um, 30, no, 53, mm -hmm. the, the, 
black and gray crossweave, mm -hmm. that one does tend to um, fray right. a little bit more, mm -hmm. in so, my opinion, but the newer ones, not so mm -hmm. much. So I, I love working with crossweave. I love the texture that it gives. Um, I do really enjoy solids as well, but if I had to choose, well, not my 200, I can't give up that 200, but um, if I have to choose between a Bella or a crossweave for a back, back knee, background, I would, if I can have a crossweave that matches, crossweave all the way. So. And Lisa's asking if crossweave can be starched the Kimberly way, and I'm going to say yes because I have starched it. Okay. Okay, I got some good ideas here. One from Donna C says, what about a printed 108 backing with a mini swoon printed on it like a cheater print? All I'll say on that one is you'll like what's coming up down the road because that might actually, not the 108, though I like that idea, that might actually be happening, but I can't say for sure. Yeah. A swoon print is a great idea. That's all I'll say. And Carter Ant says, are you going to do a swoon bill? You know what? I have had one. It's funny that it's even called swoon bill. Um, I've had one in my folder. I have like a folder where I have all these different quilts drawn up that I want to make at some point. And after I did the stitch bill cross stitch that has the swoon mm -hmm. in the middle, I was planning on releasing that as a pattern and haven't because, you know, life, life. it just gets in the way. And I meant to do it. I would have like a folder made and the math kind of done, but I haven't gotten there yet. So I'll, I'll bump that up my list for sure. Okay, how big do you cut your bindings? Two and a half. Okay. And I machine bind. And then it looks... Almost all my quilts. It looks like everybody's wanting a, some more blue and white quilts. They want to know if there's any on the way, and I think there, there. probably are. <laughs> there probably are. That's a great question. If you like blue and white quilts, I think, I think you should yep. stay tuned. Yep, and if you have any of the Nantucket Summer, I would save it to go with the next one. It wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think that's all the questions we have today. Um, okay, well. And I wanted to tell everybody we did make the Spooky Box live. I usually don't intermix other new things, but it's live, so I can just tell you that it will last until Monday. After Monday, I don't know. We'll see. But I wanted to make sure that I show that on a live stream so that it doesn't sell out before I've been able to show you. We are going to be giving away a lighthearted Jolly Bar and a Bonnie and Camille Quilt Bee book to three winners. And I'm going to let Camille ask the questions that you guys get to answer. Oh, um, I think we're doing the same question we asked last time during the trunk show, which was which of the quilts shown today was your favorite? Yeah. And it's so fun to read your comments. Thank you everybody for watching this i hope hopefully you made it through that very long <laughs> truck show but it was it's always so fun to hang out with you can really yeah thank you so much camille so fun i'm totally gonna make the red bundle i'm gonna make it in that quilt you suggested i'm gonna make a quilt block t this weekend and show it on instagram okay daybreak yes. day daybreak and lighthearted. i'm yes. excited to see it awesome well thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys next week bye bye